wonderful tzibur of young Talmidim here, having come from different parts of the world. See Talmidim there even went in Wow. So much bigger, the Rebbe never reached uh, the other world. He went to Finland. Wow. Wow. Special Madrid. But coming from Arba Kanfa Zahoretz, the holy place, it can't, be, it can't get much holier than this. Just turn around, you see, like, while you're, I'm looking this way, you're looking this way, you see through the window. Your mom is looking at the Bakam Amikdash. It's, wow. Wow. Such a Madrid. Unbelievable. As a matter of fact, the Parshas HaShavua, Watch the Shavu of Eretz Yisrael ends as Shavso said to Shmaru Mikdashi Tiro and the Yeshev. Shabbos comes every week. It's hard to rise to the level of appreciating Shabbos. You know, Yom Kippur comes once a year. You get up, you know, move. Hesa was once a year. Shabbos, every Shabbos. So for people who come to this part of the world once a year, Wow. For someone who's literally looking out the window at the Middash every single day, it's a little bit difficult to rise to the level of Dashi Tiro. We become too familiar sometimes. Too familiar. Too familiar. Truth is, as important as the Bakram HaMikdash is to us, it certainly is very, very important. Just look a little bit ahead. Chomish Vayikra. V'nosati mishkali b'sochachem. But as Baruch promises to give us a mishkan. V'salachdi b'sochachem. In a certain sense, an even higher madriga. It keeps going in ascending order. It's Rashi. Now we come close to the Shrina, panic. Not then. Yochal Otiru Mimeni. So it'll be so familiar that the year as Hashem will be lacking Khalil Vachas. Tabalomar, the post again, Bayisi. Bayisi Lachem Nalokim. And Alkim is even being a Satin. Same time, while we're so close to the Mesa Mikdashi and looking out the window, shouldn't be Khalil as a kind of a familiarity which takes away the appropriate Mora HaMikdash, the appropriate U.S. Hashem, the appropriate U.S. Shemaim, the U.S. Chet. This is the essence of what I'd like to speak to you about. A few brief remarks before I open the floor for, for your questions. I'm sure they're very important. I was Ocha to be a Talmud in Shiva's Karen B'Avna. Tov Shin Chov Zayin. In Chodesh Iyer, Tov Shin Chov Zayin, it was a little bit 49 years ago, was the time when the Kodesh Baruch Hu's miraculous assistance and salvation he was saved from a threat to kill us all. Every man every woman, and every child. The threat was real. The fear was palpable. And I'll demonstrate both. After the miracles of what has now been known as the Six Day War, the Israeli army overran the British originally British fortress in Latrun. Latrun was the site of many, many ferocious battles back in 1948, when it kept as a very important strategic location. But back and forth, the Arabs, the Jews, the Arabs, the Jews, the Arabs, the Jews, unfortunately, when the war ended, it was in Arab hands. And it was then Mibtsar for all those intervening 19 years. But when Saal overran, such a, it all happened so fast, 
They didn't have time to shred their papers. You know, a, 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 a retreating army always shreds their papers. No one should be able to find the secrets. Well, they didn't have ten, time to shred their papers when they ran away. And they found this in Arabic. It was printed in the front page of the Yiddi Yolk of Marib. Does I remember that, that far back? A plan, if you look at the old maps, some of the new maps have this thing called the Green Line. I won't go into that, but such a line exists. If you look at the Green Line, pre-1967, it's a place called Shalavid. Who here has heard of Shalavid? That's a Baruch Hashem, a huge yeshiva. That yeshiva was tiny, primarily was a, a kibbutz. And at that time, as you know the geography, Shalavim jutted out a little bit. It was surrounded on three sides by Arabs. To the east, to the north, and to the south. It was only joined to the west, to the rest of the Yishuv of Am Yisrael. And they've discovered a plot. All it took was two kilometers that the Arab tanks from Latrun would go seal it off just two kilometers and kill every man, woman, and child. The Feirish. La Hashmid, La Arab, La Abed, As Kol Ayud. As you think, that's inconceivable and unthinkable, impossible. Another yeshiva you may have heard of. Have you heard of the yeshiva Haratzion? Who heard of Shiva Haratzion? It's located near a place called Kfaratzion. Kfaratzion was a kfar which was settled in the 40s. In 1948, it was besieged by the Arabs. They evacuated the women and the children, and the men attempted to hold on to the issue. They were overwhelmed by opposing forces, and they raised the white flag of surrender. It's an internationally known symbol. The white flag means surrender, you lay down your arms, the fight is over, you can take us to captivity if you want, whatever, it's over. Well, what happened? You know what happened? It was the day before the first day of Akama Samadim. It was the day before. It was Dalad Iyar, the yard site. I use the word yard site advisedly. They killed every person there. With a white flag. Two, three people some are snuck away to say, hey, this, they killed them all. Cold blood. With a white flag hanging. I was over to be part of that incredible victory of six days. If you want to know that not only was the threat real, but the fear was palpable, the story took place not far from here. Who ever heard of the Miri Yeshiva? Raise your hand. You're three for three of us. The Miri Yeshiva is a couple of kilometers. You have to understand that before 67, the boundary ran, is it still there, the Barclays Bank? Is it still there? <coughs> a lot of, you'll see a lot of bullet holes in the world, promise. That's where the, the, that was a fence. And the bus would turn around over there by the bottom of Rehob Yafo there, that was it. And the Miri Yashiv was one kilometer, approximately, from the border to no man's land, which was... And when the hostilities in Yushalayim began, the Yeshiva boys went into the kitchen. That was the, that was the, the kitchen. And some man from Sal came into the kitchen and said, listen, women and children to the back, able-bodied men to the front. I'm fakeit. He's giving us neshek. You know what neshek is? The guy who got beat, we can't spray neshek. Chalila, they come break through. Chalila. Expect it to happen, but there was a fear. Your standards, the chairs and the tables, that's going to be your weapons. Who told me this? I'll say the Shev Omro. The man's name is Rabbi Faskowitz. He's a Robin Hillcrest. He has a yeshiva called Adrego, something like that. To that effect. I think it's other. He's in the Vardak. He's in the family of the Vardakas. Related to Rabbi Chaim Shmulevitz, the famous Rosh Hashiva, he's so used to say And Rabbi Nachum, the son in law, the famous Kedushi Rabbi Nachum. He's a, a relative of that. He was there. He told me that 
during that time, this part is famous, of Chaim Shulevitz was saying, Tillin, he later said, he, this is written, that he attributed the fact that they were saved, and they were literally saved, because a pagaz, a shell, landed on the building, not just on the building, uh, by the, they called the balonin, the gas, the whole place to land, the shells were landed, the gas tank, the whole thing could have erupted in flames, it could have all been consumed by fire, and the shell did not explode. Reb Chaim, to my knowledge, for the rest of his life, said, Hal, on that day, not Yom Yerushalayim, just Chav Ches, Chav Zayin, the day before, it was still shelling us, it didn't explode. But, and there's a famous story, which is again printed, there, Reb Chaim said we were saved, not because of our tillim, because a lady, there were many Sephardi ladies, it was not so observed, but they were very traditional. And she came and she said, my husband abandoned me, he ran away with some other woman in the Riviera. He left me in Aguna. Hashem, I am Mochalim. I am Mochalim. You have to be Mochalim to save us. Rebbeim said he felt that this cry out of this poor Aguna is what saved him more than all the Tillim. But to show how palpable the fear was, Reb Nachum, Rebbeim suddenly he was learning Gemara. All of a sudden, the front was a bit of a tumble, some, some noise, some turmoil. Reb Nachem, having been told how frightening they are, how, how frightful, they have to have the women in the back and the men in the front with the shtendas, he assumed that the end was near. Here's a man who escaped the Nazi Holocaust and now is ready to give up his life on Kiddush Hashem. He told Moshe Fassbitz, Moshe, the Arab shine. The Arabs are coming now to kill us all. He's ready to give up his life to kill Hashem. Ready to say Shema Yisrael. That's how real the fear was back in 1967. The Kaddish saved us. May I fail the Yagodo? In three days, we were at the Suez Canal at the Arden. Mopped up two days, and the last day we went up to get the Golan. It was a six-day war. Of course, when we were winning, the UN right away stopped the fight against it. For three weeks, we were going crazy, there was, there was total silence, gosh. When we're winning, all of a sudden, uh, we, we, we won't go there now. That's the kind of time it was more constructive. So after the, after the, that, those, that week, the only Mishalayan, everyone wanted to come to the country, to come here, right here. You can't come. And this protection has got in. Can't come. Why? Are you kidding? Their minds is barbed wire. This everything's. It's been in 19 years. They're putting, we're opening, we're opening the area of the Kotel Amaravi the first time to the public on Shavuos, exactly a week, the a week after Yom Yerushalayim. I was carrying me out. The whole yeshiva came to here to the city, and an all nighter at Echal Shlomo, right here, the whole King George. And those days they had. Standard time. There was no, there was no summer time in those days. So the sun rose four something in the morning. We dava vasikin, and we figured we'd be the first ones there. They come out. We dava vasikin. We didn't know it'd be a safer Torah. Right? We dava vasikin. Create a Torah. We had to go down to Musaf. Yeah, the crowds are so big at five in the morning. <laughs> we just find something and have police barricades, and they're singing and dancing. Everyone together, it was unbelievable. You, you could never forget what you see. I remember dancing at one time, it was one of the, the Rabbah with the with the tan kapota, uh, with the white socks, with the strimo. On the other side of me is a Yudisha, and I die in local kachdati, without a kippah, with his camera hanging over his shoulder, and we're holding and dancing together down to the coast. You can't believe it. It really happened. And it was, what were we singing? We were singing, Samachti, Omer, Li, Beis Hashem Nelech, Om Do Soyer Adlenu B'Sharai Chi B'Shalai, Yerushalayim Ha'Avnuya Ki'ir Shachur B'Alai Yachdav. Chazal say about that person, Shenasu Chaverim Zelazeh. They became friends, everybody. Dati, Lo Dati, Charedi, it doesn't matter. It was just an incredible day. And we came down, the whole place was barren, strewn with all kinds of junk, Fortunately, fortunately, the Israeli army 
blew up every single house in this whole plaza that's right in front of you in real time. They went away and they were weak, but too late. The Arab, the UN, uh, just knocked it all out. That's the result of this plaza here. Oh, Hashem. And with Dominic Mosef, I can't, how can I forget? With Dominic Mosef, what's Mosef by Shalosh Rigal? You know, it's about. By the angel, it's here in Yucha. You should lie, basically, no, Shalosh, but Simcha Sol. You're used to it, you're born to it. When I was here, and that's a month before, Cholish Nisa, the Abba took us on a tour. It was a famous tour guide, Zev Vilnai, the most famous tour guide. He takes us to Armona and it's him. He says, take binoculars, you'll be able to see maybe the cult of Arabi. I think maybe you see it in his dreams. We thought we would never see it, and our children would never see it, and our grandchildren would never see it. That was our mindset at that point in time. And all of a sudden, a month later, we're standing in front of it. Absolutely overwhelming. We wanted it after we got Muslim. We said, till then we did. We wanted to go back. Can't go back this way. The New York Times, that friend of ours, said a quarter of a million Jews came that day. Probably doubled it. Let's go back to the Shuk. And both say, you are not allowed to go through the Shuk today. East of Gomer, too dangerous. But that day, and many days thereafter, we went to the Shuk, and the Arabs are cowering. Not just cowering, as if they're afraid of me. <laughs> Squatty little uh, yeshiva book. Kach has it. We roll kolame aros kishem hashem dek v'lech al yom yimek. We were zorcha to them, and then we went with tours that after that month. Shchem chevron nefishi rotzim. They were scared of us at the time. The Kaddish Baruch could do what he wants. He could do it again, like this. Hey, all of the kolot to shmo. In one second, they could be afraid of us and send the other way around. I lived through it. I saw it. After all the euphoria, it was hard to open the Gemara. Now, Gold of Sephora and the Rocha, you have to learn, you have to learn, you have to learn. You have to learn. We'll learn. <laughs> See, quoted for us this Pasha. You'll read, you'll read it next week. It's true. When Osati Mishnani Misovakan, will be a base of English. But a higher madrega than that is the Salahli Misovaka. You can learn Torah, he told us in Karabiyam, you don't have to go to Mishalim every minute. And I'm telling you, you can learn Torah not only here in this place overlooking the coast of Amarabi. You can learn Torah if you're going back to London or to New York or anywhere. And I think it's important that usually I hear this time of the year. It's important to, to have in his home. We're holding the Chodesh year, and although officially I think this man may go until Tisha, I don't know when it ends officially, but I've been around long enough to know that, yeah. What's the English day today? May what? 17th. 17th. Stay here as long as you can. As long as you can. But I wouldn't be surprised if you already have tickets to go home at one time or another. And maybe the Maybe it's even in the month of June. No, I don't see why. Maybe. Experience. So many you hold it by the ear, by, by, by the ear. You can learn anywhere. You must learn everywhere. Chas Hashem to think, in this place is better, I'm learn. I walk out, get on a plane, it's over. Chas Hashem, that's the lesson you have at home. V'salach li v'sochachem. Says the Svarna, lo al moko mechad l'vad. No. Not only in the Mishkan and the Mikdash. No. No. And Salech Mesochachem, the Iraq, Kabodi, Bechol Mokham, Shatiyusha. Wherever it's Sadi goes, the Talmud Chacham goes, that's the place that Kaddish Baruch goes. And please go with humility. Now with the Eucharist, I learned all year in Eretz Shah, a big knacker. Because the Sphora concludes. El Zabit al Ani Mikhairuah Bakhorid al Dvari. Khosh Prabhu looks for people who are humble, who realize that they were privileged to walk in these holy Dalaramas that for many years no Jew could walk. And how many of our ancestors pined to come to this holy land? My grandfather, the Khwan of the Rakha. 
lived his whole life, he came from Galicia, moved to, moved to New York, the Sof Yomov, he came to visit his relatives, and he fell in love with the land. Told my grandmother, we're moving to Yerushalayim. Moisha, she tells him, you bist farukt? Are you crazy? All our children and grandchildren in New York, you moved to Yerushalayim? Sura. Sura. Ich schreibe der Agent. Ich denke, Subas. Hakol Mal in Eretz Yisrael. Make a bracha here. Wow. Look at all the oil hidden by the Cholam Shakol the other rock. So they came. They came to buy it began. They had no telephone. Chalutziut. My grandma didn't know the word language. She had a little notebook. Go to my colon. She would say, I know how far it's Kim and she's Yvim and Malach Kodim. She's giving me a whole notebook. So he told my grandfather, why, why do this? Why is it cool? He loved to be in this country. He said like this. Moshe Rabbeinu was not Zoycha to come to this country, to Eretz Israel. Would ich declare a Moshe? A short man. I, small little Moshe, was privileged to come to this country. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Came back once for the first grandson's wedding. And that never, never left the country again. He passed away. We say Batova here, late 80s, but he was alive. Abba Saharitz, we saw. You take it for granted. It's a problem. You take it for granted. Here, you take it for granted to look out the window. Don't take anything for granted. Wherever you go, it's even a higher level than the Sadi Bishkali Bisobachem is the Salahi Bisobachem. Everywhere. Bukhom Baba. She abana based on Mignish from Hair of Yamenu. We don't stop there. It's even a higher level, believe it or not. The Sain Khalkeinu Bisarvasek. It's a higher level. What the center of the board is talking now? Bacchus. I think about Marcus? Let's go to Marcus a little bit. Just one second about Marcus. <clears throat> well, it tells us, in the What does that mean? One day, one day, in the presence of a Kaddish Baruch, in the presence of a Kaddish Baruch means for real, for real, for real, for real. It's worth more than Elif Karbonus, a thousand Karbonus. My Rebbe or Goldberg used to say all the time. You learn a daf Gemara, wherever it may be, wherever it may be. This is more important than the Rabbanu Shalom. Daf Yudah Ben Alf. Shamati be'odem shi'om v'mosa yomu zokin zeh v'yomu shlomo b'nov v'yudah b'esa b'chir v'nal regal. When will this old man David die? They knew he couldn't build the Mikdash. The Shlomo built it. The Samachti. People have good, had good aspirations. They wanted to die for a good reason, at least. They got to be Karbanis. Amala Kadesh Barchel, Kitov, Yom Bachatirach, Amelev. Told the Yomecha Shata Osik Victoria Lafonai. Me Elef Olos Shaosin Shlomo Binchalak Lafonai Gamemesbech. The last line of Yudam and Alf. Pulsing until. One daf Gemara that you learn somewhere in London, in Teaneck, Five Towns, wherever you be. 
It's worth more than the Kaddish Baruch Hu, than a thousand minutes right by the Mish- Mikdash if you're not learning. If you're learning, yeah, it's better. <laughs> but I'm not learning. And a final point before I open the floor for questions. Thank you. In that same parsha, the parsha we did next week, we see that a person does not stand still. A person either goes up or chalila v'chas goes down. In b'chukol saytelechu shentiu ameilim b'atorah. It's not enough to learn Torah in an easy chair. Shetiu amelim batoru. The first Rashi. Amelim batoru. Telechu, to go. You are all to be commended. You all picked up your home from your home and you left to copy his holy place to learn Torah. I'm sure that you all would agree the Torah learned here is different than the Torah learned back, back at home. A totally different level. And now that you're coming back, or when you will be going back, don't fall down to your original low level or intermediate level. Keep it up. Go higher and higher. Only one way. I made this my Torah. Of course, a precondition for Amelas Batoro is Kiyama Mitzvahs. Both. And I'm fully aware of the fact not every high school boy in the United States, I don't know about London, I'm kind of high Madrid, but not every high school boy in the New York area where I happen to, to reside at the present time is keeping every single mitzvah when he's in high school. I won't say more than that. Chalila v'chas, have a yurida. Chas v'shalom. Maybe that ticket's still already in your pocket already. It's already May 17th. I'm scared of this. A yurida, chas v'shalom. Chas v'shalom. You have to have, oh, I'll coast. It's gate v'shtazor. You can't coast. The Vilna Gaon says, Pshat. Or achayim l'malo l'maskil. You're going up. L'man sur v'shalom matah. So you shouldn't go down. Well, some people call it life is a down escalator. If you don't go up, you get pulled down. And the way to go up is our male is I'm told people even already have summer plans. We go to camp this and camp that, and school this and school that. I'm sure whatever you're doing will be a bit of some sort. I, 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 I have full confidence. But whatever bits you're doing, make sure that our male is I have at least one of my alums here from Barash Akolal, aside from many of the Rebbein who are alums from Barash Akolal. I can, I don't know, is interested in coming to Camp Barash Akolal. There's still a few choice spots available. Those who want to come the whole summer, there's some scholarships available. Get me after this year. Rashi te- is teaching us in such strong language. It goes up to the various high, high levels that a person can reach one after the other, after the other, after the other. That's in the Brahma. But if it blows his shmuli, the Asamela Batara, Khalil Bachas, you go down seven steps to the worst and lowest level. And that's how it starts. Rashi gives you the whole business. Rashi doesn't mince any words. As it goes down, down, Khalil Bakas, even to be a, a koifer beiker, one of the sun. Lo loma, lo osa, moiz macherim haosim, soni as a machamim, moneas a macherim lasas, koifer misses going. You probably do. Nah, it can't happen to anybody. Impossible. I've already been in Yeshiva all year, maybe two years. Impossible. As I've said here from this pulpit before, more than once, I know people who hear Shana Aleph, even Shana Bet. They go to some places where they shouldn't be going in the first place. Some of them are the known as universities, but I call them other things. (laughs) 
the original university, as was conceived by the Mulumadim of, of, of a thousand years ago, 500 years ago, Renaissance, the place of learning. It's okay, so learning not so bad. You know, some some parts of learning really should stay away from. It can even lead to fear of a missus, a fear of But that's a, that, that is a problem, but much more serious problem is if you don't go to universities today, the learning is a, a tough one. Tough. The eager is. I'll Hope you'll still be able to we read that those parshas in a few weeks. You see too many kulkulim and too much, much worse than yai. Chalila v'chasa bochem in yeshiva, and it can be about teret ploy. You go down like this. You have to go up, 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 up. So all, if you go back, stay is even better. If you go back, you have to have be in the yeshiva. You have to be in the yeshiva. Whatever yeshiva. It's an unofficial trip. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> Our yeshiva is wonderful, Baruch Hashem. But there are many yeshivas. But you have to be in the yeshiva. You cannot be... It's impossible. There's other places to live in those places. It's an impossibility. You have to study in such a place. <coughs> Live near Yeshiv. Commute. Mm-hmm. Someone told me yesterday, Yosef at Sadik, mm-hmm. he, he was your age. Mm-hmm. He ran away. It was a terrible Yates Sahara. All his instincts and all the circumstances told to do an Avera, and he pushed it and ran away. This young man told me yesterday, what do you do when the, that same thing is in your pocket? And all those same images are right there. How do you run away from that? A Rossi Lord made Sahara. You can't run away, put on spice, spice is Torah. That, with that protection, we can go on. With that protection, we can go up. The higher and higher my drinks. So I conclude by giving you a bracha as you reach this wonderful makom, Tarti a makom of geographical place. And also, in the months you've been here, since, since Elul, it's a, long, it's a, Hebrew, a long time, you've undoubtedly reached a Moko conceptual place of some, of some height. You should continue to go, and chayel and chayel, from strength to strength, constantly going up in your Torah, and your mitzvahs, and your avodas Hashem, and your chesed, and your mitzvahs tovos. So that, Perhaps when you'll look back with a 49-year uh, retrospective and say, ah, I was in this wonderful yeshiva, and this is the best year or two of my life, and it raised me to a level I keep wanting to go higher and higher in Torah of Yerushalayim, amen be amen. Now I'll take questions. But speak loud, please, yes. What is the definition of Masara, and how does Masara Allah function? Questions: What are the definitions of Mesorah and, and what is its function? By Rebbe of Salavetik, the Lord of the Bracha, that was his key word, Mesorah. He felt within him an amazingly strong desire to pass along the Mesorah that he received from his father and grandfather. A Mesorah of brisker learning, a Mesorah of Yerushalayim, a Mesorah of what Torah means, what mitzvahs means, what, what loyalty to Kaddish Baruch Hu means. He had a desperation to pass along this Messiah. For this reason, he was Mamet Tamid and Harvey at significant personal cost. 
into his older years, he would schlep every single week from Boston to New York. Didn't have to. He, he felt he had to give the Torah to the next generation. I was privileged to learn five years by my Rebbe and two summers in Boston with him. And that's what we saw. Just wanted to pass along the Messora. The Messora was learning, learning, and more learning, and recognizing the importance of learning, the critical nature of learning. He was so much opposed to what we call a balabas, so even if he kept the mitzvah, but didn't learn. And you know, you may think that ever, that's obvious. It wasn't obvious then. When I maybe started teaching in the 1940s, it wasn't obvious at all to the American scene that a, a quote balabas is supposed to learn. Where the rabbi is supposed to learn? It'll be my to us. No, and not just learn superficially. Learn in depth. In depth. And he would always tell us, I heard it so many times from him, you'll see in his writings, that the depth of Torah is at least as deep as any other discipline. There's no science, natural science, social science, nothing. Mathematics, and he knew all these things. Nothing is deeper than Torah. And it's only by appreciating the depth of Torah they can pass on this Messorah to the next generation. And he emphasized to us that the Messorah is not only an intellectual Messorah, which it certainly is, and he certainly was number one in that, but it's also a, what he called, a, an emotional Messorah. And that emotional Messorah, he emphasized time and time again, is gender blind. We said this morning, Kiddushin limits to a father and a son. But for Odatan Levanecha, or Levnei Vanecha, Yom HaShem Matlatne HaShem Elokecha Bechorei, the experiential, as he called it. Never to forget Mama and Asinai, it's fathers and mothers and, and sons and daughters, no difference. And grandparents and grandchildren, totally gender blind. And he had this, such an urge to pass this on to us. He said, let's complain. That the students they want my Torah, but they don't want my Mesorah. They don't want the, the warmth and the and the beauty and the drama that we got from Mama and Sinai to be passed on to each and every generation. That is every person's challenge in life. Obviously, if you're for Rav you can speak to thousands of people at once. But Mr. Shem, one day you're going to have families of your own. And you are going to be responsible to pass the Messorah down to the next generation. Some of you will be Rabban Mechanchen. The greater ability to do so. But the Messorah is everything. The Messorah is the understanding of how we conduct ourselves. It's much more than a series of collected laws. Much, much more than that. Messorah is that we do things a certain way. That's how it was done by our parents, grandparents, way back when. Look, how do we know that our religion is true? Because we remember the Yom HaShemat L'Chorev. Petishka Chazatvarev. Same, same pasukim in Pasha's Vashana. As the Rambam writes, and the Kuzari writes, we know our religion is true because we have a Messorah from our, straight up to our, to, to, to Mama Rasinai, that Hashem revealed Himself, to Chvod of Yatzmo, to Mama Rasinai. That's how we know our religion is true. Coming from Shavuos. That's how we know. Just about halfway through Sphere. That's how we know. No other religion has that. Not Islam, not Christianity, they have uh, their other little Messorahs. Two people, so one person. Not going. But that's the Messorah. And that Messorah translates into a whole different attitude towards learning, towards, our, towards religious behavior, towards everything in life. That's why it's so dangerous. I'm trying to respond to your question in full. And there are people who make light of Messorah. As long as I'm within the letter of the law, I can find a way to do a, a, a B, or C, the fact that it hasn't been done this way for, for uh, 
uh, 500 years, 1,000 years, it doesn't matter. I'm a legalist. I just look at it. That's a wrong attitude. It's a wrong, we love all Jews, but that's a wrong attitude. It's a wrong attitude. And I'm not sure if you follow the events of uh, my town coming from the holy town. But in my town, just, to know, just while you've been here learning, all kinds of new practices. I, just, I, just, I don't want to like, spend the whole day with examples, but just a couple of things. Some have to do with the role of the Jewish woman, where it's very hard to maintain a Messiah at a time when the world's changing so fast. There's a whole tumult about the women, women wearing tefillin. All kinds of fanciful references, you know, it's not really so bad, da 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 da. I'm not going to go into the details with you now. Why it maybe perhaps it really is bad in front of the strict halacha. It's a masara. It's a masara. It hasn't been done for as long as we know. So we're not going to start it now. Unfortunately, I think after, if you're really honest, there's a clear connection between the desire for some women to wear tefillin and what we'll call a greater push for what we'll call egalitarianism. That everything should be the same. It's almost impossible to separate between those two pulls and pushes. And what's wrong with that, you'll say? It's a good time There are different gender roles for men and for women. We should say it, as my Rabbi said it, unabashedly and unapologetically because it's the truth. The fact that it's against modern day society, so what? My Rebbe was against the start of his days too. And he said, these were his words, don't be swayed by the charm of the society that you inhabit. Which, in his words, what they do then, you can imagine what now, is a neurosis. cannot give in to the pushes of society if they're anti-Torah. Now the story of the women rabbis. Ah, what's wrong? I'll find your 15 at I'm not going to go into those. There are halachic issues. But the transcendent meta-halachic issue is Misara. It's not a Misara. Oh, Hashem, I think you're hearing a little bit of a cocoon. You're saved from some of these, some of these, although you have these things in front of you, look, they probably can check what's going on all over the world. But if you, if you, if you plan to come back to the United States anytime soon, like you'd stay here, but if you plan to come back, beware. They're a new phenomena. And start to be a learning to your male the Torah. Remember the other word, Misara. We have to be true to our Misara. What we receive from our Rebbein. Now, are there other Misaras? Yes. Many people have different kinds of Rebbein, different Gedolim of different Misaras. They don't agree with my Rebbein. That's okay. My Rebbein never told us, Kablu Dait. He never said you have to follow my way and not a different way. As long as a different way is a way which is clearly, clearly within the bounds of Torah, Yerushalayim, and a bit of a different Messiah. But not these newfangled activities and pronouncements, and, and, and there's this new Midrash, what's up on the top? New Midrash! We have our Messiah, it's about, I don't understand the, 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 the Chavish Chub Torah, and the different Messiahs, each one of which was espoused by someone with great credentials. You show them Achronin. Not that we talk to Harry gives his or now her own shot. This mistake that this biblical figure made, or that mistake, no bit rush. Why not? Everyone has a license to explain that it's true. You have to have a, before you start saying things, you have to have that, the Torah of Yerushalayim. All part of the Torah. 
And within the Messiah, there's room for my Rebbe said, Chidush. He was a tremendous Mechadish, but not Shinoi. Chidush is improving from within the system, not Shinoi changing it from without. I hope I answered your question. Yes, sir. What's the Masora or the, the reasons for keeping two days in Eretz Yisrael during the Torah? Very good. If someone is an American who finds himself in Eretz Yisrael for the Shalosh Shagala, what do you do? The Masora? The Messiah goes back to Rabbi Yosef Karo. Have you heard him? Who are Rabbi Yosef Karo? That's fine. You want to show that out? That's true. And he paskins, and he even recorded in his chubbis that the, the idea of the Ali al Regal, it's not a new thing, and now it's much easier to go on an LL plane. You hear me here with the. Yeah. They slept from far away, they came here, and they had Minyanim. Minyanim, where they davened Yom Tov Tika Tfilas on the second day, the Ein Pol Sepeo Metzavtik. That's his words, not mine. No one protested, even though it's a big shayla. It's a block of Shadabu, you shouldn't do it publicly. They did it publicly anyway. You try to do it a little bit more privately than they did it then. That's a that's a Messiah for you. The Mishnah Guru passes that way. That's how a Messiah. I have to tell you that there are other halachic positions. This is what they call today the day and a half. That's what uh, we were taught when I was in Karmiyatan, the day and a half. Which means you don't do malacha, but you dive in the hole. There's a, certainly a basis for that. I wrote a whole mimer about it, why a day and a half may actually go back to the Gaonin. Well, it's a thousand years ago or something. And there's even a minority view of what's called one day. But it's a problem. The problem is, number one, the preponderant majority of Gdolia Apostle Adayom Azen hold two days. And number two, even the day and a half and certainly the one lead to a zilzul. And you know what? The zilzul extends to America. My son told me some years back, Abai told me, he was he came to this country back in 1990 as a you know, post high school. Caribbean, of course, where was he sukkahs? Of course, here we have to be here. He remembers that it was called the Laron. Everybody kept two full days. But now he's been in this country on and off. Now that's a figure out, it's about 25 years. He sees a gradual change from two days, now starts a day and a half, they're in the dominant weekday dominant. And I see he's keeping even one. He says, Abba, if you don't say something, you don't do something, next thing you know, they'll be keeping one day in Chutzlarts. I said, ah, that sounds a little bit outlandish. How can it be? But guess what? My son is smarter than I thought. I always thought he was really smart. You know what happens now? What happens now is that there are people who keep the quote unquote one day people. Yeah, if you wait an extra day, you can't get, you can't get no tickets. They get in a plane. Both say, let's say it's next. Both say, Shminyan Serbs. This year it couldn't happen because Shvish al Pesach was over on Friday night. Baruch Hashem didn't have the proper Pesach. Okay, but the Sukkah is going to be over Monday night here in this country. It's coming up. And they get on a plane Monday night. They land Tuesday morning. And you see them getting out of their taxis on Tuesday morning. Everyone's going out of coffers. The tea neck at the five towns. And they're getting out of their taxis. What are you doing? I keep one day. It's tea neck in the church for one day. My son was very smart. I believe that although when I was here, Rebbe told us a day and a half, it's really not, it's Yeshiva boys can do it, families can't really do it, and it's confusion. It's much better. Follow the Messiah of Yosef Kara, the Mishnah Brewer, keep two days. <coughs> That's our Messiah. Yes, sir. Uh, what's the thing is you can see is an electric shape and the results of the shape? The question, if you can understand his British accent, is about a, an electric, sh electric shavers. Uh, you may notice a whole pulpus, a whole uh, halakha discussion about the permissibility of shavers. As you can see, I don't really affect me that much these days. But uh, it once did. Um, my personal view is, they're either all us or all of There are those who say they're all us. Uh, that position I can understand. 
Shave is too close. Others say they're all mutter. Why are they mutter? The Torah prohibits a tar, a razor. The tar is called giluach sheyesh v'ashchasim. It's a shaving motion, not a clipping motion. And it has hashchasim, it goes right to the skin. That's a razor. That's for you. Some electric shavers advertise, we give such a close shave. It looks at the pictures, it, it almost looks as if the blade is touching the skin. So we wrote letters, people who I know wrote letters twice to Norelco. I think it was called Lift and Cut or something like that, which is supposed to be the closest, the closest, the closest. So we asked them, does the blade touch the skin? It sounds like that for the ants. And the answer was an absolutely clear no. Does not touch the skin. The blade does not touch the skin. It's a very, it's a scissor motion, very close to the skin. That's true. In my opinion, if any sh shaver is butter, then they're all butter because the blade does not touch the skin. Others disagree with me and say, depends if it's sharp, if it's dull, if it's this, if it's that. It certainly tires of their opinion. But I think it's either all or nothing. Okay. Yes. How does one get Yerushalayim? <laughs> How many hours do we have uh, on both sides to work? Uh, How does one get Yerushalayim? Hakol b'day shamayim chutz b'yerushalayim, the Chazal say. A Kaddish Baruch can give you health. A Kaddish Baruch can give you wealth. A Kaddish Baruch give you so many different brachas. But Yerushalayim, you have to earn on your own. How do you appreciate your Shemayim? The first is an absolutely unshakable belief in the Kaddish Baruch. There are those, even their Amunah is not so strong. In today's world, part of it is, I spoke about that before from right here, we live in a world of postmodernism. Not modern world. Modern world, no. Postmodern. Postmodern means that what was acceptable by the modern society when I was growing up, that's passe. We can go we break beyond those borders. Where everything goes. And when there's no absolute truth, and therefore by definition, no judgmentalism, that is the opposite of Yerushalayim. Ani ma'amin ben Why are those two words inserted into the sitter? Apparently there are people who are Mam and Bibuna Shainishlan. Never you're a Shemaim that way. Bebuna Shlema. There is Hashem and he rewards and he knows and he punishes and then and, 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 and the whole the whole all the thirteen principles. And once a person recognizes that. You reach the level of, should reach the level of, Shivisi Hashem and Nagdi You know? So my children were young, they would sing, Hashem is here, Hashem is there, Hashem is truly everywhere. Up, up, down, down, right, left, and all around. Here, there, there, well, that's where it can be found. I remember the words properly. So, watch it then limit the children. Shivisi Hashem and Nagdi Wherever I am, the Kodesh Baruch is coming almost right there. You know the story of Yisrael Salanta? Yisrael Salanta was once uh, was riding with a, with a, a wagoneer, a balagola. And the balagola said to Yisrael, listen, I'm going here to do something. If you see people coming, they're, watch, they're watching, call out and say that they're watching. He goes and climbs over a fence and about to take some apples off the tree, commit an act of theft. The destroyer runs out. They're cooked! They're looking! Oof. Scrambles down, goes back. Oh, Happens three or four times. So, what are you talking about? They're cooked. They're cooked. I and Rova, Oza, Chomas, Vachoma, Sefa, Pesem, and Echdom. Yerushalayim. That's a Yerushalayim on a level, perhaps we'll call it Yerasa Onish. The fellow was with 
the wagon, they don't want to get caught by the, by the cops, put them in jail. And that's a very important level, not politically getting the slightest, but a much higher level is Yeres Aromos, which means the recognition of our Kaddish Baruch's greatness, how puny we are, we think we're big knackers, but you know, <laughs> unfortunately, we know all too well when someone all of a sudden, Ahmad al-Islam, is cut down, who gets a diagnosis, Ahmad al-Islam we can't even think about, you understand our vulnerability. You know, it wasn't that long ago, you come to shul, and in Kippur, the place was overflowing with people. Many weren't even observant. When the Chaz got up and said, Miyichia Miyamus, everyone started to cry. You see, for that moment, they understood that their life was in Hashem's hands. But they forgot when they walked out the door. But for that moment, they understood it. A year as a robber was not just a fear of death. But it is the understanding that Kodesh Baruch Hu is so great, is so high and exalted, Romans, that we would do well to revere Kodesh Baruch Hu in everything that we do. I discussed it with Rabbi Korn Shlita just a few minutes ago. Rabbi Sal Shlita Paskind. You want to know how do we reach that level? It's tough. You have a good rugalach. You know, I'm staying away between you and the rugalach, but that's okay. You stay breakfast. But when they come to the time to have the rugalach, you know, they make a bar made of his own. Well, even the Shem Shemai gives you more strength to learn. Yeah. That's the way to do it. There's no shortcut to Yerushalayim. And today, Yerushalayim is needed more than ever for the reason we spoke about earlier. Because he... As I said before, you, can, you really can't run away from the HRS anymore. They're, 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 right, they're in your face. This is an expression we have back home. In your face, literally. Whether it be when you walk the streets, or look at a computer screen, or see advertising, it's in your face, everywhere. You need your Shemaim to know what you're allowed to look at when you have to close your eyes. Shmir Zinayim. Below the Surah That's hard. I'm not politically difficulty. Oh no. It was against human nature. Ultimate year in Shemai we learned from Yosef Atzal. That he was able to overcome all the temptations all by himself in a foreign land. And he's the one who implanted the ability to have that year in Shemai in all circumstances for all generations. have to reinforce this message. I'm so glad you asked the question. Time and time and time and time again. Open Basilis Yeshua to page one, where he writes that he's not telling a illusion. That's a little extra nebus, but okay. But, but just these truths may be called self-evident to those who understand, but you gotta review it over and over and over again. You should put a Basilis Yeshua in your pocket, wherever you go, pull it out. Read, read a paragraph of Messias Hashem. That's that's what's going to save you. That's what's necessary. This was indispensable. We should all be zochah. We say it in the Shkodesh mention. Chayim sheyeshon, Abbas Torah beYira Shemayim. We all say, Yira Shemayim beYira Shet. All kinds of discussions. Why it's found twice? Well, these arguments, one here says that, have you a twice? Some say, because Oshev the covenant to me. Guys, you have, you know, Bo Hashem, 
you don't lack. You have a lot of uh, availability. Chalil of the I can undo a year of if that's for a second time. Ava's Torah of year That's the best way to achieve it. To Ava's Torah. Why is it the of the person, Khalid al Khaz, is tempted to do a sin? Yasid with Torah. The Tzachara, the Bikem the Tzachara, Mutl, great. If low, if not, Yikra Krishna. The Tzachara, Mutl, great. If low, Yaskilo as Yom Misa. Remember the day of that. As it says, Rigzu ve'al techto, yarg is adam, yez ato ve'etzara. Imru bilvavchem, Torah. Al mishkavchem, kriyishma, v'dom musela. Yom ha'misa. I ask the obvious question. Wait a minute. If Yom ha'misa is the most potent anti-yetzara agent, it's going straight there. I give a muscle from the medical field. The stronger the medicine, the greater the side effects. We don't want to go straight to Yamamisa. That can lead us to depression, lead us to lack of the joy of life. That's the last resort. The first resort, Torah tablet. Learn Torah. Chazal tell us that the Torah protects us cleanses us, and lest you fear, my dear friends, that you forget the Torah. All the magnificent, sure, the wonderful rabbi, you don't really remember them. So my rabbi, your Soloveitchik, was called the Bender Shir Hashir. Bender Shir Hashir tells us of a king who came to his subjects who were on the beach. He said to them, I'm going away for the day. Here are barrels. Take the barrels, take them out to the water, fill them up, and bring the water into this big container on the shore. What happened? As soon as he leaves, they see the barrels have big holes in the bottom. Almost all the water fell out. It's a crazy king. Half the people said, it's nuts. We're not going to do this. They put a lot of sunscreen and they sat by the beach the whole day. But the people who are here as their owners, they knew how great the king was. There must be some cheshman here. The whole day, they're taking the barrels, having a few drops, they still, still stay, the rest of falls out through the hole, and they bring it to the container. A few hours later, the king comes in, blows the whistle, and half the guys are there, and then, Suntan. Half the guys are working. What is wrong? I gave you instructions. Your Highness, there must be some kind of a mistake. Your Majesty. What? There are holes in the bottom of the barrels. Oh, my dear subjects. You think I needed the water? I wanted to cleanse the barrels. The way you cleanse the barrels, you take a whole day of salt water coming in and in and out to clean the barrels. Same thing to the Mevish. Perhaps we forget, as we say in our country, it goes in one ear and out the other. But while it's in between, it cleanses the brain. The brain is clean, it's occupied with Torah. As the Ramah writes, and the Vilna Sisu Rabin. As the Mephorosh was saying, a boring game of mine. Mayim ain't bo the choshen v'akrab yesh bo. Ain't mayim on the Torah. There's no mayim, there's no Torah. Chalid v'chas, nature pours it back in the nechoshen. The nechosh, the yetzahara gets it. Yes, Rabbi. Yeah, that's the ideal way. If that fails, you're learning with your lovers, with your abchayim, with your toysis, Else you're learning. <laughs> Whatever you're learning, and you're learning Masachta Mach is a beautiful Masachta. 
If that fails, equal Krishna. Krishna means a more direct devotion to Hashem. Shema Yisrael. Or, when you finish that, say Tillim. Not an so much of an intellectual exercise as a pronouncement of faith, a devotion to Hashem. That should overcome the eight sorrow. And if even that fails, then and only then you resort to the final resort, the Asla Yom Avisa, which should be very depressing. The ideal is not to say till them all day. No. Those who don't know how to learn, they say till them all day. You're Boch Hashem, you're smart, trained, Bokharim. You should be learning in depth as much as you can. And that itself should be to you a Shemaim. To overcome the Eitzar. If that fails, Krishma, Tillim, whatever it may be. If that fails, to think about Yom Abisa, which is a bit depressing, yes, it's true. That's why it's a side effect we try to avoid. And saying Tillim and Shema all day is a side effect of you're not learning enough, you're not you're remaining in Amaras. The best way is to study Torah, here and everywhere. <coughs> Next question, please. Yes? How does one strengthen his desire to learn Torah? How does one strengthen his desire to learn Torah? In two stages. One, to recognize the importance of learning Torah. If you don't recognize the importance of learning Torah, then it's very difficult to appreciate it and to engage in it. Every day we say, you said it last night, no doubt, Ki heim chayeinu ba'orech yomeinu uvahem nege yom ha'bolon. How many people pay lip service to that statement? And how many live it? Heim chayeinu. That's our life. That's our lifeline. That's our lifeline, is, is Torah. And not just keeping mitzvahs, but nege yom ha'bolon. Study Torah whenever we can, day and night. That is our oxygen. That's what we breathe. A person has that attitude. Wow. I have to say, I'm pretty sure that most of the Tabitha, when they came here and back in Chodesh Elul, did not have that attitude. Not your fault. You weren't brought up that way. I hope it is that after so many months, that that attitude begins to take over your way of thinking. And if it does, Torah, learning Torah is such an important enterprise, then undoubtedly you'll be want to put your mind to it. Now it's true, it's true that there are different types of learning Torah. There's an expression that ain't other low made, other Bavakam shall be Bokhamits. Bavakam can be in the place, like the Sushiva, where you want to learn. What could be the type of Torah that you want to learn? Gemara, Tanakh, Halacha, Bachshava. So much Torah to be learned. So many ways to learn all of those above disciplines. Find something that's good for you. A good Rebbe, a good Harusa, a good Savior, a good book. You have to work on it. Find the right niche. Every person has his own Chelek and Torah. The Torah that you learn, and I'm the this is going to sound a little crazy to you, but the Torah that you can be mechadish. Every Talmud in this room can say something which hasn't been said until now. Sounds crazy. It's possible. You put your mind to it, and the Talmud can make his Rebbe smarter. He asks a question a certain way, a different a new, a new nuance. That's your chelik and Torah. You can be an agent of divine providence to bring a certain Torah thought down to this world. And if you're ready with such an agent, with quotes, those who came before, quote the Tzos and the Nesivas, or the Rabban and the, the Ritva, whatever it quotes, you're part of one long chain of the Messorah. There's a Messorah of, of the Liban Torah. What a great Messorah to be part of. What a great value system to have. There are many Torah who are straying after all kinds of other types of activities and putting the emphasis on those activities. 
heard just now on a, one of the tapes at a certain yeshiva. It was play ball. You know, in this country, it's not yeshivas. They don't allow it. This is a play ball, and it's fine. All of a sudden, the yeshiva said, no more ball. Why not? As long as the boys playing around, well, that's fine. Now, they got themselves uniforms. Oh, uniforms. That means it already has a chashibus. They run around, it's good to run around, it's healthy. But once it has such a chashibus, he didn't want this issue. What moves us? Does the Torah move us? Or do other activities, call it the world of sports, uh, music, entertainment? I don't have to explain, you know what I mean? So people think about it. Even if it's kosher, it's not Torah. Much more so if there's certain parts of it, sometimes. Major parts of it, but not kosher. So you need, in order to have the ability to learn Torah, you need the Hashim as a Torah, which leads you to undoubtedly to the Abbas a Torah. You understand how important it is. You will love that enterprise. It's the most important thing. The Rambam writes about Abbas Hashem, Kushabricha or Asachadam. I think it's a very down to earth example. Maybe there's even a person in this room who once thought this way. Maybe about a man who can't get a certain woman out of his head. Or vice versa. He call us Ava Ani. Shira Shira. The whole Shira Shira is a bushel for the Ava between I call Baruch and Klai Yisrael. Both directions. Call it an obsession. Where Baisha is represented said, my man is a shikr. Others is, is a drunk. A shikr for land and toyer. You can't get enough. You know, a shikr can't. He needs another bottle. He needs another hour to learn Torah. See if he can't go to that door. Abba said Torah. Hope that all of you, when you dab and chayim, they don't know Abba's Torah, you should work on it. We say it again. Say it again in a few weeks, and we bet for for the next month. Wow, the greater Abbas Torah. And it'll only go up and not go down if you bench in the next Shoshkodesh somewhere else, not in the Holy City of Yerushalayim. Yes, please. How do you get a Munashleimah? How do you what? How do you get the Munashleimah? Here's the answer. There's a big dispute among the Rishonim. What kind of Amunah we should have? Amunah Pshuta or Amunah's Chakira? Chakira means you say all the philosophical arguments and you weigh them and you prove that a Kaddish Baruch exists. The primary statement for that is the Chobos Olavavos. That is Amunah Pshuta. No Chakira. So the sorrow we said before, my parents, my rabbis. For those who are philosophically inclined, they are encouraged, perhaps even required, to engage in the Chakira, the Chavos Alabamas. For those who are not, Ramam has some harsh words, but not everyone agrees with them. For those who are not, the best thing is a mode of shoot. Simple faith. Ramban puts it. I will say no lo shikulon. Our fathers did not lie to us. We assume that the Kabbalah, the Messiah we have is the truth. <coughs> Plenty of proofs that Shem created the world, the story with the, with the inkwell spilled and made a safe, right? Those proofs that are, are, are brought. And Muna Shlaina is really best realized by the sorrow. And that's exactly the, the beginning and the end of my, of my comments, the importance of the sorrow. 
Would the Bissara, a person that had a full of Shleimah, with relative ease, someone tries to puncture a hole in his own What does someone tell to your father is not your father? How do you know your father is your father? You give him a patch. My father is my father, we're talking about. No room for argument. So, Kodesh Baruch was our father. We believe it. Because our, our human father and our Rebbe's, who are like fathers, gave this to us. Because they believe in it completely. And only if you believe in it completely, what we call it a certainty, can it be the passion that we need in our world of Torah mitzvahs. Amalek. What's Amalek? Two things Amalek stands for, our arch enemy. Number one, Amalek is the gematria of Suffolk. Everything is in doubt. Is there a God? We give us Torah Sinai. You name it. That is a doubt. It's Amalek. And else Amalek. Amalek we know. Asherkarcha Baderach. He cooled us down. Took away the passion. And the two go together. If there's no certainty, there can be no passion. You cannot be passionate about a doubtful premise. So Abuna Shlema has to be a combination of certainty and passion. It comes from your parents, from your rabbis, from the sperm that you read, each one according to his own. But it has to be there. Even if you come away from this wonderful yeshiva and you forgot what the Rabban says in Makas Abbas, you forgot what the Rebbe said, the Rosh Hashiva said, don't lose the certainty of the passion. The Amunah Shlema and the fundamentals. Hashem exists, He gave us Torah Sinai, and it's our responsibility to be involved in that Torah to the best of our ability, to stay away from sin and circumstances which lead to sin. We should be passionate about our religion, about our Torah. Even if we're not fulfilling literally, but in principle, we love nothing more than to sit over a safe room, to hear a shir, to do a mitzvah, to do a chesed. With Hashem's help, we'll all be able to reach this level. Mitzvah Hashem. We should be zochem. Just as we began, we're privileged to overlook this piece of uh, land right behind me. The holiest piece of land in the world. We should all dive for that day. I guess it'll be the first online when the Mashiach comes. Come today, come today. You're right here. Mamash, right here. We should be Zoka, the Chuba Shlema, the Gula Shlema, from Harry Amen. Amen. Amen.